Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies, this broadcast is dedicated to us. Now, the topic that we're going to read verbatim from the Word is probably not a very popular one. Because women want to do what they want to do instead of Yahweh, what they would, what Yahweh would have for them to do. And Jeremiah simply declares in chapter six sixteen, he says, "Thus saith Yahweh: Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, the ancient paths, ladies, where is the good way, and walk therein." And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. So I pray, ladies, that you will have an open mind and an open spirit and a hungry heart to want to know the truth and walk in it. And you will not be that one that does not want to walk in the good way Therefore, you won't find rest for your soul. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. I'll be reading from a King James Version and the Amplified. Apostle Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Mashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man, male gender, is Mashiach. And the head of the woman, female gender, is the man. And the head of Mashiach is Elohim. Alright, I want to stop right here and I want to interject something. There are many women who will take this verse right here and say that their husband is their covering. Nowhere in any of these verses does it say that your husband is your covering. Nowhere. It says that your husband is your head, which is completely different. This word head means that he is your chief. (laughs) He He is the boss. He is the number one that you answer to in your flesh. Yahweh Almighty is number one husband. And your natural husband is number two. Nevertheless, if your husband tells you to do something or wants you to do something and it's not against scripture, you do it. We obey our husbands. Sometimes that's difficult, but we do it anyway. (laughs) All right, back to the head, not the covering. So your head, ladies, is your husband, male gender. He's not your covering. He is your head. He is your boss. He is the prominent figure. He is the master and the Lord of the household. He gets the last say-so, not you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man, and sometimes that's difficult. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes that is difficult. Nevertheless, it's righteous and it's holy. That your husband has the last word. Back to 3. Verse 3. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Mashiach. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Mashiach is Elohim. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. This verse does not say what the covering is. It doesn't say what the covering is. Uh, I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. It says, Any man who prays or prophesies that is teaches or refutes or reproves or, or, or admonishes and comforts with his head covered dishonors his head. Who is his head? Mashiach. Next verse. But every woman, back to King James, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, 
dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. All right. Every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. Now it's not talking about her husband here as being her head. That just wouldn't make sense. Some of y'all need to make these verses make sense and not just pick some old something in there to make it mean what you want it to mean because you want to do what you want to do. All right. So her head. All right. I want all you women to put the head your fingers on the back of your head. You feel your skull? All right. Where your skull meets your neck. That's where your head ends. All right. So every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, however you uncover your head now, it doesn't say what the covering is, dishonoreth or brings shame and disgrace to her head, this one is your husband. Not the first head, the second head in this sentence. You bring shame to your husband. All right, let's read the Amplified. And any woman who prays or prophesies when she is bareheaded dishonors her head, it is, a, it is the same as if her head were shaved. All right? It doesn't say what the covering is. So what is bareheaded? What is bareheaded? How do you make your hair your head bare. Think about that. Keep that in your heart. Verse 6. For if the woman, female gender, be not covered, however you cover, let her also be shorn. Shorn is the past tense of shear, cutting short the hair of the, of the, on the head. But if it be a shame... Or disgrace for a woman to be shorn or shaven. Let her be covered. In other words, he's saying it is. It is a shame for a woman to be shorn. Shorn means cut. Cut your hair short. Or shaven means shave it to the scalp. Let her be covered. Alright, let's read verse 6 in the Amplified. For if a woman will not wear a covering, whatever the covering is, Then she should cut off her hair, too. But if it is a disgraceful for a woman to have her head shorn or shaven, let her cover her head. All right? How do you cover or uncover? Well, that right there should kind of clue you in on something right there. You're going to need a piece of cloth if your head is shorn or shaven. But it don't say what the covering is. It doesn't say that a piece of cloth is your covering. It doesn't say that. Verse 7. For a, for a man, male gender, indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of Elohim, but the woman is the glory of the man. Verse 7 in the Amplified. For a man ought not to wear anything on his head, in assembly, for he is the image and reflected glory of Elohim, that is his function of government reflects the majesty of the divine, but woman is the expression of man's glory, majesty or preeminence. So ladies, think about this. Your husband is not your covering. He is your head. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Verse 8 in the Amplified. For man was not created from the woman, but woman from the man. Verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Verse 9 in the Amplified. Neither was man created on account of or for the benefit of woman, but woman on account of and for the benefit 
of man. So ladies, you were created for your husband. All right, verse 10. For this cause, what cause? Because you were created for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Have power on your head because of the angels? Huh. Verse 10 in the Amplified reads, Therefore, she should be subject to his authority and should have a covering on her head, whatever the covering is, as a token, a symbol of her submission to authority, that she may show reverence as do the angels and not displease them. So ladies, to have power on your head, what is this covering? It hasn't said yet. Verse 11. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in Yahweh. In other words, they're one flesh. Verse 12, For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of Elohim. Mm -mm -mm. All things of Elohim. Verse 12 in the Amplified. For as woman was made from man, even so man is also born of woman, and all, whether male or female, go forth from Elohim as their author. You know, I just had a thought. When a man leaves his family, his mom and dad, and he marries a woman, they become one flesh. And divorce is so degrading it's so painful because that one flesh is ripped apart split down the middle and it's like a never ending miserable funeral think about it ladies think about this stuff for as the woman is of the man even so is the man also by the woman but all things of Elohim. Verse 13. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto Elohim uncovered? Doesn't say what the covering is yet, does it? Judge in yourselves. Is it comely? Is it proper? Is it decent that a woman pray unto Elohim uncovered? Verse 14. Here we're getting ready to tell what the covering is. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Whoa. Why is it all of a sudden talking about hair? <laughs> because that's where we're going with this covering. Verse 14, again. Doth not even nature itself teach you? What's nature? The meaning of nature is the order of nature as opposed to what is monstrous, abnormal, or perverse. Or perverse as opposed to what has been produced by the art of man. In other words, humans created you women cutting off your hair. That's a... Uh, that's a, a, a perversion. It's a perversion. It's not nature. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, well, how long is long? Well, it's not what you esteem as long or what I esteem as long. But this word long gets into meaning to have long hair to let the hair grow. Let the hair grow? I heard one woman. <laughs> I was teaching this and she just piped up and she said, and she was one who cut her hair. She cut it and permed it. She says, well, I let my hair grow. It grows from the roots. It's just hair. <laughs> and, and when she 
trims off her hair, she's not letting it grow. Ladies, long hair, to let the hair grow. In other words, you don't cut, you don't trim, you don't uh, shear, you don't shave, and you. And I'm going to add permanent. You know what permanents do? They burn your hair off. They destroy the glory that Yahweh gave you. Again, verse 14 in the King James. Doth not even nature, Yahweh's things, Yahweh's creation, Yahweh's way, nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame, it's a disgrace and a dishonor unto him? Verse 15. But if a woman, female gender, if a woman have long hair, Let the hair grow. It is a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. Verse 14 and 15 in the Amplified Version. Says, does not experience common sense, reason, and the native sense of propriety itself teach you that for a man to wear long hair, it is a dishonor? humiliating and degrading to him but if a woman has long hair it is her ornament and glory for her hair is given to her for a covering all right let's examine some of these words again we've established the fact that a woman is the female gender according to Yahweh Almighty not according to the perversion of this world And a woman, a female gender, is to have long hair. And the word establishes the fact that the word long means let the hair grow. In other words, you do not let the hair grow when you cut, trim, shear, shave, or put a permanent in it. I heard one woman say the rats chewed it off. I thought, oh my word, what a lie. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory, it is an honor, it is a praise to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. Now, these two words for, at the end of this sentence, are a little bit different. The first word for means because. Because her hair is given her instead of a covering, instead of a piece of cloth. This is Yahweh's nature. Now, I don't have a problem with women who wears veils, all right? But to teach that wearing a veil is mandatory and it was a commandment, is not found in the scriptures. The covering has always been her hair. Always been her hair. And her long, uncut hair is given to her for a glory when she's praying and prophesying so that she has power on her head because of the angels. Because of the angels. Verse 16. But if any man seem to be contentious or argumentative, we have no such custom, neither the assemblies of Elohim. Now let's read the... um, Verse 15 and 16 in the Amplified. But if a woman, or but, yeah, okay, but if a woman has long hair, it is her ornament and glory, for her hair is given to her for a covering. That second word for again means instead of a covering. Now, if anyone is disposed to be argumentative and contentious about this, We hold to and recognize no other custom in worship than this, nor do the assemblies of Elohim generally. 
In other words, Apostle Paul is separating tradition of men from Yahweh's ways. It is human men's tradition for women to wear a piece of cloth on their head. That's fine. If that's what your husband commands you to wear, then so be it. But Yahweh's word never commanded it. You have to do what your husband says. But the word says that the woman's hair is given to her for a covering, but instead of a covering. So these verses are pretty important. And Yahweh uh, took a whole chapter nearly, or half of a chapter, to discuss what the covering is that a woman should have upon her head. And all of the words cover and uncover are not nouns, and it doesn't say what the covering is until you get down to these last verses about the woman's hair being given to her for a covering. I can go to Jeremiah chapter 7 and 28. Where Yahweh rebuked Yisrael, and this is what he said to her concerning her hair. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of Yahweh their Elohim, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Yerushalayim, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for Yahweh hath rejected and forsaken the, the generation of his wrath. In other words, Yahweh did, was upset with Yerushalayim, and he told her to cut off her hair, because she was a dishonor to him, her hus- their, Yerushalayim's husband. Yahweh was her husband. Okay, now we have a little bit different story in Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 7. Yahweh is speaking again to Yerushalayim, Israel. It says, I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown. Whereas thou wast naked and bare. In other words, Yahweh ad- admitted that Yisrael had become obedient. And because of her obedience, she caused her hair to grow. And of course, he used this as a parallel. We know that a city doesn't grow hair. <laughs> okay? We know that a city doesn't grow hair. A woman, a female human being, has hair. All right? And she is to wear long hair, uncut hair, long uncut hair as her covering according to the word that we have just read. And Yahweh said at the end of this, well, Apostle Paul, Yahweh spoke through Paul, that if any man seemed to be contentious or argumentative about this, that we have no such custom. Now, he didn't say He didn't say all that he said about the hair being the covering to throw it away with this verse. This verse is just not throwing everything away that Paul just said. It's it's in the versions and other versions you will find that we have no other custom but this custom. That the woman's hair is given to her for a covering. Women are trying to look like men, act like men. They're out of their place, not being keepers at home. And it's time for women who claim to have the real Holy Spirit to get rid of the seducing spirits of Jezebel and Delilah that are rocking them to sleep to believe a lie and be damned. It's time for women who claim to have the real Holy Spirit to search the word. And not make his word multiple choice because it does not suit your spiritual taste buds. Yahweh is calling his women who claim to have his Holy Spirit to be obedient 
to all of his word, not what they want to obey, and just ditch the rest of it. Yahweh's word is pure and clean and holy. And I find because women are the weaker vessel, as Yahweh's word declares, it seems like unless they stay prayed up and fasted up, I've seen women that have just just totally gone bonkers and may y'all will cover me by the blood is all I can say may y'all will cover me by his blood and his tender mercies that I stay with what he has given me in his word but women that go through horrible 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 trials seem like when their trials seem like they never end um, they revert to weakness as in cutting off their long locks of hair they put on men's apparel those britches they put they start wearing makeup and jewelry and decking out like a harlot and uh appear making their demeanor appear as a man's appearance and yahweh is not pleased with this if you got a new revelation you have received a seducing spirit remember the assembly at thyatira had faith and grace they had works it doesn't say grace it says they had faith They had works, they had charity, they had uh, patience, and it named works again. But yet, that woman Jezebel taught those people not to obey all of Yahweh's word. In other words, it's faith and grace without obedience. It's love, charity, patience, long-suffering, all these works doing good deeds for people without obeying the word it's a stench in Yahweh's nostrils it's a stench in Yahweh's nostrils if you want to know why Yahweh is the only name of your God and Messiah please write to Jerry or Kathy we mail out free audio CDs and scriptural literature on why your God and Messiah is only named Yahweh. Again, please write to Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia. Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia, for you out of the country. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. If you have online access, I want to invite you to um, go to our website. I want you to go to the YouTube. We have a new website now that has all of our radio broadcasting and our, my husband's televised broadcasting teaching from the King James Version and the Hebrew Scriptures why your God Messiah is only named Yahweh. Go to the YouTube site and type in Yahweh Ministries. Go to the YouTube site and type in Yahweh Ministries and it should pull up all of our radio broadcasts, all of our television broadcasting and if you're having trouble or difficulty uh accessing that site go to the youtube and type in hour of truth 777 and you can reach it that way as well so there's two ways to reach my husband's um televised broadcastings you go to the youtube site type in hour of truth 777 or you can go to the youtube site and type in yawa ministries you must spell yawa Y-A-H-W-A-H. The purpose of my broadcast is to provoke women to study, to tear words apart, dig to the root word. But more than anything, open your heart up. Get the, get the sludge out. Dig out the, uh, the, the hardness that, and that trials and tests have put within you. And ask Yahweh to give you a tender heart again. To want to know the truth. To want to obey the truth. Not to make his word multiple choice. It's not saying that you don't have anything. Because unto every man of us women is given the measure of faith. 
It's walking in it and obeying all that his word says. Until next week, shalom.